Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about how one of the seemingly least important c 12 features has the potential to completely change how we write idiomatic c -sharp. in the same way that file scope, namespaces and top level statements completely change how we write our code. Now I want to talk about it in this video because I don't know if I like it and in this video we'll discuss that and explain why I think it's a bit of a weird thing to have in the language, especially based on how we write code nowadays. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Now, quick announcement before I move on, we just launched a brand new course on Domtrain called Getting Started with Clean Architecture in .NET. And that course is authored by the excellent educator Amikai Mantenband. You probably know him from YouTube, link in the description if you don't already. Now, Amikai works for Microsoft and he works on technology that powers tools like PowerPoint and Office in general, as well as Teams. So, you know, his code is used by millions or hundreds of millions of people every year and after all the research he did when he made this course he said and to quote him this is the best clean architecture course you're gonna find out there for dotnet now to celebrate the launch i'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20 percent discount code so check the link in the description and use the code you see on your screen right now at checkout to claim the 20 percent discount and two more things there will be a deep dive course coming on clean architecture so if you buy this course you're gonna get a special discount code for the deep dive as well, as long as you subscribe to our mail list. So go on Dom Train, scroll all the way to the bottom and put your email down. We're gonna cross check everything and we're gonna send you a code. And if you also wanna get started with DDD, which can be paired with Clean Architecture during checkout, you can add that course as well for a discounted price too. All right, enough with that, now back to the video. All right, let me show you what I have here. I have this simple console application. And ultimately the feature I want to talk about is called primary constructors. Now you might have seen primary constructors and we kind of had a flavor of this in records before C Sharp 12, but now they're coming for traditional classes and structs. And they look like this. We can have a public class over here. Let's say user. Traditionally, you would have a constructor over here, which could have some parameters. For example, string name and also date only date of birth. Now, these would be parameters you could only use within the constructor and they would not bleed outside of the constructor in any way. If you want to use them outside, you would have to have either a field and assign it to that field or you would have to have a property and assign it to that property. It makes sense. Now, with C Sharp 12, what you can do is you can actually take these and put them on the constructor level on the class declaration. That way you can go ahead and start creating users like this. You can say new user, Nick Chapsus, and then you can have a date of birth and that is it. Now, at this level, they are still constructor parameters. However, you can actually use them in many ways. For example, you can create a property over here, for example, name, have it be a getter only, and then assign that parameter from the constructor to the value of the property. And if you know how properties work behind the scenes, they actually have a backing field. So that is assigned in the constructor on the backing field. In fact, if I compile my code over here and I go to the IL viewer, you should be able to see it over here in the lower C shop. So the name parameter, the name property has the backing field and that field is set to that value on the constructor. So that's how our code would actually go from high level C shop to low level C shop. Now, interestingly enough, you can have other things over here. For example, you can compute fields if you want to, if I wanna have, for example, an age field, and this is totally not how you should do age fields, but what you can do in here is you can say date time dot today dot year, and you can say date of birth dot year, um, sorry, not equals, but minus, to get the age. This is not how you get the age. This will give you actually a bad value and you have to account for things like leap years. But for the sake of this video, let's say you can do something like this. And if you want to be computed on every time you actually call age, you would have a computed property like this. Also, at this stage, we're still working with backing fields, but if you wanted to use, let's say the date of birth um, in a method where you can say public void test or example here, and the moment you say date of birth here, and I, I can actually do something like this, then if I compile the code and I go to the lower C sharp code again, then this time you're going to have a field generated for that parameter to store it, not in the same way as the backing field for the property, but a dedicated field for this constructor parameter itself. So ultimately what I'm saying is the compiler will do a lot of magic behind the scenes to account for anything you might want to do with this primary constructor. Now, before I explain how this will fundamentally change how we write C-sharp, I want to point out that this has nothing to do, or 
behind the scenes has nothing to do with how records work. So if I have a user record, for example, that has the same signature, well, this is really not the same. And the reason why it's not the same is because these will be behind the scenes properties, true properties, not just potential fields or constructor parameters, but as you're going to see over here, they're going to be properties. Let's just scroll all the way up. The way these things are lowered is a lot, but you can see them over here. We have a name parameter with a getter and an init only setter, and then the same thing with a date of birth. So do not confuse primary constructors in classes and structs with record class constructors and constructors of record structs. It is completely different. I know it's confusing. What do you want me to do? <laughs> now, why do I say that this will completely change how Red Sea shop? Well, let me go to an existing project I have over here, which is a weather API from a previous video. And if I just go to program.cs, nothing really changes. But if I go to any of the other classes, for example, if I go to this open weather map service, well, everything looks normal on the surface, but if you actually can potentially see it. I have a gray color over here in my constructor now in my ID, and I have a note saying convert into primary constructor. So I have a new refactoring I can use to convert this to a primary constructor. And now my constructor is removed, my injectable constructor is removed, and is being moved all the way up to the weather map service. So now it is here. Any of my classes that has any service like this injected and no particular logic in the constructor will have this option now. If I go here to my cast weather handler, I can do the same thing. And both of those things now go here. Now, this does remove that constructor, that code that you have there every single time. However, to me, it does feel a bit weird because now I don't know how to structure my code. Previously, I could very easily see that this is a class implementing or extending another class delegated handler, and I could see my constructor clearly. And when the constructor gets too big, I might actually new lighten it um, in this fashion over here. Some people prefer this, some people prefer this. Pick your poison, I don't care. But now, if I do this, then all that moves to the constructor up there, I lose half of the parameters, and this only has two. I've seen constructors with five injected things, like you wouldn't even know what you're injecting if you were using this view. Plus, I don't know what interfaces I'm implementing or classes I'm extending. For some reason, my eyesight starts here to see what happens to the class, and all I'm expecting here is interface or classes being implemented or extended. So I guess that might be me having to retrain my brain, but I can totally expect this being the norm from now on. So what are we doing? Well, you can say, do something like this. And I'm like, okay, like, but is it this? Or do you keep the column here and then you do something like this? But then do you know that this is not an injected thing and it's an extension thing? And should it be like this? Or like, should it be more like this? Like, I don't know how this will go. And that's where you come in as well. In the comments, please let me know what option you would prefer. I'm going to put a bunch of versions now on the screen and all of them have A, B, C, D or whatever. Choose the one you prefer and put it in the comments down below to see which one is the most popular one. And if you don't mind explaining why you prefer this version, please write that down as well. Now, I do think that this is a good change overall and having the option of a primary constructor is a good feature, but I don't quite know how I feel about this. Given I have this platform and this community, I'd really like to know your thoughts so we can potentially come at a conclusion that we all agree with. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.